Welcome back. It's going to be our last lesson on um, in data and statistics unit. Um, I previously, previously had mentioned in another video um, <coughs> stati uh, misleading statistics or graphs. So that's what we're going to look at here. We want to be able to identify what are the characteristics that make a graph misleading. So if you look right here, I've drawn two different graphs. Now we want to look at them and we want to see what the difference is. Because if you just look at the lines, which of these looks like a more impressive growth? Well, this one over here looks like it's growing quicker and it's going up further. But let's take a look at what it is we're looking for. The first thing we want to look at is our titles and our labels. I'm looking at True Green Fertilizer. So I'm looking at the same thing in both of them. Why do they look different? If you'll notice, I still have fertilizer sold in the thousands on the side and the year on the bottom. So what we want to look at is what's the difference between these graphs? These numbers are the same here on the bottom. I'm still looking at the same years. However, if you look at my y-axis here, you'll notice here I'm going up by an interval of 2. Okay, So it starts at 0, it works its way up by 2, and I can see where it's going. If you look over here, we talked about this little mark here, which means it's a broken graph. I have a broken graph here. I didn't start at 0, I started at 5. And you'll notice the interval I chose is also larger. Um, two spots is only one unit. So this would be five and a half, six, six and a half. So you'll notice I've spread my numbers out and I haven't started at zero, which makes these two graphs look very different, even though I'm showing the exact same thing in them. So this is what you want to be careful of. Statistics that can be misleading. We can do this to make people think that something's growing quicker, that something's growing slower, to kind of put a skew on it so maybe we look better than, than the competition or they look worse. So you always want to be aware of what it is people are trying to do. So on the next one, I'm just going to give you what are the characteristics that you want to look for that let you know that when, a uh, when a statistic or a graph is misleading. So here's four big things that you want to look for and you'll know that your, your graph is misleading you by. The first thing you want to look at is the scale. Is it compressed or expanded? In that first one, I expanded the scale in the second graph, which made the growth look more impressive. By compressing a scale, you can make it look less impressive. By, um, by expanding it, you can make it look like it's going up more. So that's just another way you can kind of skew the data, make it look like how you want it to look by compressing or expanding your scale, meaning I'm picking smaller numbers or I'm picking number, bigger numbers and spreading them out. Another thing is the interval of the scale are not equal. If they start out going by 50s and then all of a sudden they flip to going up by 10s. So I have 5, 10, 15, then I decide to go 25, 35, 45. That's, that does not have the same interval. Whenever you're picking a scale, we've talked about that with our previous graphs, you should always have the same interval on it. So if you suddenly shift an interval, that's going to make your data look different too because these are all visual ways to quick look at and try to draw conclusions from. Another thing is if there's no titles, labels, or if the units of measure are not being indicated. Um, you know, feet is going to be a lot different than centimeters. So what did we measure it in? By not labeling that, you're leaving your graph open for interpretation, depending on what uh, unit the person assumes it was measured in. The same thing without a title or a label. You're starting to assume what should be on that side and what you think should be on it, and that can also mislead you in this idea of graphs and, and how they should look. The final thing um, is what I showed you on that first one, a broken scale. Now, remember, a broken scale is not always meant to mislead, but it can be misleading. So if you're going to use a broken scale, somewhere you should indicate using a broken, um, using a broken scale um, simply to con uh, save space, okay? Um, because not everybody that uses a broken scale is necessarily trying to deceive you in how they make their graph, but that's something you want to let people know. This is a broken scale. Um, I didn't start at zero. But you'll notice that that can make a big difference into how you display the data. And when you just look at it real quick, you see what it is that you want to see. So these are the four main things. When you come into class, we'll take a look at some graphs and we'll apply some of these concepts to it. Um, so make sure you take notes. If you have any questions, you can uh, ask me in the comments in class or email me. Have a great night, guys.